Amateur astronomer Gus Johnson likes the quiet and he likes the dark. But clouds and sub-zero temperatures are working against him as he stargazes near his home in western Maryland. Well, Jupiter went behind a cloud, so we have the moon. Johnson has been stargazing for 50 years. And tonight, he's invited some kids to join him. He has a near photographic memory of hundreds of star positions, and he loves to share what he knows. That planet has a diameter 11 times that of the Earth. Johnson is the maintenance man at Deep Creek Lakes Nature Center. He's also an avid reader of Sky and Telescope magazine. In 1979, he was featured there for discovering a supernova that scientists now believe is the newest and nearest black hole. That's the supernova right there. When I came to M100, there's this other little star. For some reason, it caught my attention. I don't know why. And later on, I checked a photograph, and it wasn't on the photograph. And that proved to be the uh, supernova SN 1979C. Pretty proud? Yes, I was. And I am. And thankful, too, because so few people actually get to discover things. Backyard astronomers have been making discoveries for centuries, dating back to Galileo, whom amateurs say is one of their own, since his degree was in art. The famous comet Hale-Bopp was discovered in 1995 by two amateurs, one of whom didn't even own a telescope. He was using one of his friends. And in 2007, volunteers in an online astronomy project discovered the Green P galaxies, so named because they appear small and greenish in images. Kim Weaver is an astrophysicist. She was part of the NASA team that announced last month that Gus Johnson's supernova, or exploding star, was likely the birth of a black hole, a region in space where nothing can escape, not even light. We want to watch how this system evolves and changes in its youthful stages from when it's first born to when it goes into a child and a teenager. Scientists believe that black holes are born often in the universe, but to actually see it happen, well, that's a story. When Johnson spotted the star more than 30 years ago, he put out an alert, and telescopes, including NASA's powerful Chandra X-ray Observatory, have been watching it ever since. We caught up with Weaver at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, where she works. This is what we think happens around a black hole, is this accreting material that gets sort of sucked into the orbit. She told us that while some professional astronomers dismiss the work of so-called citizen scientists, they do put thousands more eyes on the cosmos, which is a good thing. They don't have access to the, the large telescopes that professionals have access to, but what they can do is they have freedom to be able to use smaller telescopes anytime they want to look all over the sky. Professionals, Weaver says, tend to focus on smaller areas and on fainter objects further away. Another problem? Professional astronomers have created tons and tons of data. There are not enough professionals to look at all of those data. That's where backyard astronomers come in. This was the first telescope that I had ever got. Caroline Moore has an observatory in her backyard with top-of-the-line telescopes that she and her father used to track the ever-shifting heavens above New York State. Two years ago, at age 14, she made a major discovery, not with a telescope, but with a computer, scanning hundreds of photos as part of an online search team. I discovered the least luminous supernova ever to be observed, which is, uh, and I'm the youngest person to discover a supernova, so it kind of makes it a double interesting thing. Moore says supernova hunting is competitive. Maybe you'll find that there's some kind of thing on another planet that could help cure cancer. And we won't know that if we don't take even the smallest steps in journeying outside, you know, our planet a little bit. Back in Maryland, Gus Johnson observes fresh fallen snow and an iced over Deep Creek Lake. There's something almost sad about his intense love of the environment, even with its fleeting nature. But his discovery, that he holds on to. Were you looking for a supernova that night? Nope, it was entirely accidental. Mm -hmm. Were you looking for supernovas, period? Not then. I do now. <laughs> kind of the grand realities of existence. 
the, the Earth and everything we know is such a minute part of the whole universe, watching the creation of God. <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. Laurel Booman, VOA News, Swanton, Maryland.